I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I fear, I feel fear quite strongly. But I, um, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. Mm -hmm. There's no need even to have a college degree at all, or even high school. If somebody graduated from a great university, that may be an indication that they will be capable of great things, but it's not necessarily the case. You know, if you look at say, people like Bill Gates, or Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, these guys didn't graduate from college. But if you had a chance to hire them, of course, that would be a good idea. <laughs> so, you know, just looking just for evidence of exceptional ability. And if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it's likely that that will continue into the future. How would I describe myself? Well, I seem to have a high uh, innate uh, drive. And that's been true even since I was a little kid. I uh, really had a very strong drive. All sorts of risky things when I was a kid that I why did I do those things? They're crazy. Uh, I care a lot about the truth of things and trying to understand the truth of things. I think, so I think that's important. You know, if you're going to come up with some solution then the truth is really, really important. It's, it's difficult to obviously come up with like things that are praise for oneself. And there's bad and good here. But I think like sometimes they're just the things that seem quite clear and obvious to me. And I, I don't understand why they aren't so obvious to everyone. Sure. So how would you educate your five boys? Actually, I created a little school. What kind of school? Could you describe to us? Sure. It's only got 14 kids now and it'll have 20 kids in September. It's called Ad Astra, which means to the stars. That's maybe a bit different from most other schools, is that there aren't any grades. There's no, like, not grade one, grade two, grade three type of thing. And making all the children go in the same grade at the same time, like an assembly line. You know, because some people love English or languages, some people love math, some people love music, and they have different abilities at different times. It makes more sense to cater the education to match their aptitudes and abilities. I think that's one principle. Another is that it's important to to teach problem solving or teach to the problem not to the tools so this would be like let's say you're trying to teach people about how engines work a more traditional approach would be to say well we're going to teach you all about screwdrivers and wrenches and you're going to have a course on screwdrivers a course on wrenches and all these things this is a very difficult way to, to do it a much better way would be like here's the engine now let's take it apart how are we going to take it apart oh you need a screwdriver that's what the screwdriver is for you need a wrench that's what the wrench is for and then a very important thing happens which is that the relevance of the tools becomes apparent. So all your five boys are in that school? Yes. Until when? This is from preschool to... So far to... it's only one year old. They like it. And you want to keep them away from regular schools? No, I just didn't see that regular schools, just, they weren't doing the things that I thought should be done. Like, you know, those two principles, they weren't adhering to those principles. So I thought, well, let's see what we can do. Maybe creating a school will be better. And um, actually hired a teacher from the school they were at mm. who also agreed with me that there was a better way to do it. Have they surprised you in a way of their innovative thinking. Yeah, it seems to be going pretty well. I mean, the kids really love going to school. I think that's a, a good sign. I mean, I hated going to school when I was a kid. It was torture. So the fact that they, like, they actually think vacations are too long, mm. like they want to go back to school. I think, uh, you know, all three of those were technologists, but with different types of skills. You know, Jobs was obviously very good with aesthetics and uh, he understood technology and he really understood what people wanted even when they didn't know themselves. And he was not afraid to you know, break boundaries, but Gates would probably be better at uh, sort of raw engineering and technology than Jobs, but not as good on aesthetics. But for, for all of these guys, they're obviously very driven and they're very talented and they're able to attract great people to build a company. The, the ability to attract and motivate great people is critical to the success of a company because a company is just a, it's a group of people that are assembled to create a product or service. People sometimes forget this elementary truth and so if you're able to get great people to join the company and work together towards a common goal and sort of have a relentless sense of perfection about that goal then we'll end up with a great product and if you have a great product lots of people will buy it and then the company will be successful. It's pretty straightforward really. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I fear I feel fear quite strongly. But I, um, you know, what I'm doing is I think is important enough. Then I just uh, override the fear. Mm -hmm. But it's not as though I don't feel I feel more strongly than I would like. Which uh, areas would you never go full risk? Well, it really depends on stakes. If the stakes are high, if it's really important, then I, you know, will overcome the fear and just do it anyway. But essentially, drive overrides fear. But I feel the fear. It's kind of annoying. I wish I felt it less. Which but, company you founded uh, was most risky? Start. Well, probably SpaceX. Uh, I thought it had the lowest chance of success. I mean, I thought both Tesla and SpaceX would fail at the beginning. But nevertheless, you put all your money in that. I expected to lose it. Uh, well, technically, <laughs> what I thought was, well, I'll take half the money from PayPal, and if I lose half of it, that's okay. Uh, but then, of course, the companies encounter difficulties, and then I have a choice of either the, that the company die or put all the money to the companies. And so, really, didn't want the companies to die, so I put all the money in the companies, and then I had to borrow money for friends to pay living expenses.
what was your best idea ever? I suppose, I mean, to North America, because I think these things would not have been accomplished almost anywhere else. It's really hard to start a company, and particularly California Silicon Valley is very conducive to startup companies. And are there things you regret having done or for not having done so far? Life is short and there's lots of things that could be done that one can't necessarily do. I mean, overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the way things are. It's hard not to be. It, looking ahead, I'd like to see humanity go beyond Earth and have people on Mars. That would be really great. And to see widespread adoption of electric vehicles and uh, renewable energy.